The final item of business is members' business debate on motion 13553 in the name of Stuart Macmillan on Eye Health Week 2018. And this debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Would those members who wish to speak in the debate please press the request to speak buttons and I call on Stuart McMillan to open the debate for around seven minutes, please. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Presiding Officer, I'm delighted to be leading this debate and I'm grateful to all the members who have signed the motion and also those who are going to speak uh, this afternoon. I'd also like to uh, thank all the organisations who have provided briefings for today's debate. Ahead of today, I hosted uh, an RNAB Scotland stall in the Parliament last week and I appreciate the, the time that members gave to visit the stall. The team staffing the stall and they were delighted at the number of uh, MSPs who visited and also to learn about eye health and also the services that RNIB Scotland uh, actually offer and also the many and varied conditions that exist. Thank you very much everyone. Since 2011 I've chaired the cross party group on visual impairment and prior to this I was a member of the CPG when I was first elected in 2007. Uh, which is uh, why I'm always keen to raise awareness of Eye Health Week, as I, I recognise how important it actually is that we continue to highlight the importance of eye health, the progress that actually has been made in this area, but also the challenges that still exist. And to begin the speech, I'd like to celebrate the success of the free eye test policy in Scotland, which, since 2007, has been backed by £775 million pounds of funding, following its introduction by the previous Labour Liberal Democrat Executive in 2006. In the initiative's uh, first year, 1,349,979 people obtained free eye tests. And in the last full year, that's 2017-18, that figure rose to almost 2 million people. And I'm quite sure that ministers pre-2007 uh, would have been delighted with the growth in people obtaining the free eye tests. And I'm sure that every health minister since 2007 will be delighted with the continued annual increase. And overall, more than 21 million tests have been conducted since the policy came into effect. Well, the national average uh, uptake of sight tests across all health boards sits just below one in three people at 31.8%. I'm pleased that my own health board area, NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde, is actually bucking the trend with 33.1% uptake, as compared to the lowest at NHS Orkney at 24.1% which emphasises that more work still needs to be done to encourage everyone in Scotland to actually access the free eye health checks. Now, sight loss, like many conditions, can affect anyone, which is why it's important to realise that eye tests don't just, <coughs> uh, don't just actually go and test your sight, but they also detect symptoms of other serious health conditions, such as diabetes, high blood pressure, stroke and cancer. And if an eye health check can identify changes in the eyes before they affect the vision, then the condition can be treated before it reaches an advanced stage. This is in patients and also our NHS's best interests as it's cost effective and also more efficient than meeting the medical and the, and the social costs of people who may otherwise go on to lose vision or suffer ill health unnecessarily. Now, every survey shows that sight is the sense that people fear losing the most, yet uh, we can be surprisingly negligent about our eye health. We tend to think of uh, our eyes as only being for people who need to go and get their contact lenses or glasses. But the reality is that we should all get our eyes checked regularly, well, actually every two years, so to keep healthy. Now, last year, alongside uh, Kate Vallis from RNIB Scotland, uh, we had uh, a stall outside of Specsavers in Oak Mall in Greenock uh, to make uh, shoppers aware of the free eye test. It certainly was a, a hard shift. Uh, I certainly have had easier shifts distributing political material, I'm not going to lie, but I accept it, it may actually have been the fact there was a politician there trying to give something out, uh, but uh, it certainly it's an issue that had actually been raised before in the cross-party group, but also I've had with discussions with others. At the cross-party group uh, meeting in May, there had a presentation by Dr. Alexander Zangalidis from the University of Aberdeen, uh, and his, uh, his talk that night uh, was titled, I Care Services in Scotland, Did the Scots Get It Right? Now, where he discussed his research regarding the introduction of the free eye uh, examination in Scotland. His analysis concluded that overall the policy has been, has been a success and it is to be welcomed. However, he also highlighted some challenges facing communities, like mine, with areas of poverty and deprivation when it comes to looking after our eyes. Although more people are getting their eyes tested, there is now a small but a growing gap between the less well-off and the more affluent in society. Uh, there were various theories as to why those from the SIMD areas uh, are less inclined 
then others to actually go and get their eyes tested. Now, one theory was that uh, if an eye test indicated they needed glasses that they couldn't afford them, then this then leads to the gap, even though, uh, and I must stress this, people, uh, people actually are going to get their eyes tested, but it can lead to the gap potentially increasing. Now, Dr. Zangladius' research uh, also mentioned the people's lack of understanding around eye health, which could explain the hard shift that Kate and myself actually faced last year when trying to make people aware of the free eye tests. So how do we fix this? Now, I would like the Scottish Government to consider a few actions. Firstly, a refreshed public information campaign, making people aware of the free eye examination. And secondly, a targeted approach towards communities with economic challenges. And I, I would be quite content for parts of my Greenock and Inverclyde constituency to be used in any such pilot scheme. Presenting also four of the most common causes of sight loss are age-related macular degeneration, cataracts, glaucoma, and also diabetic retinopathy. Now, that's now the single biggest cause of sight loss among Scots of working age. Now, I've had constituents living with these conditions, which is uh, why I visited the Jenny's Well uh, facility in Paisley uh, earlier on uh, this year. Uh, it's one of the Scotland's only two specialist residential care homes for vision, uh, visually impaired people, uh, older people, which is run by Royal Blind. And also, uh, I went across the road to the Scottish War Blinded's Hawkhead Centre, uh, which provides free support to ex-service personnel living with sight loss. Well, some of my constituents actually use these services. There are still many more who could benefit, which is why I'm keen to highlight these facilities at every single opportunity. However, it's not just older people or veterans that are affected by visual impairment. As the Scottish Government's school census figures indicate, the numbers of pupils with visual impairment has more than doubled since 2010. When you consider that in Scotland, over 180,000 people live with sight loss, and this figure is expected to double over the next 20 years, and 50% of sight loss is preventable, then it's evident that free eye health checks are an important measure to help keeping our nation healthy, and it's also one that can make a real difference to people's lives. In the briefing, Optometry Scotland uh, highlighted the General Ophthalmic Services that the GOS Scotland Regulations 2006, which has revolutionised the delivery of community eye care in Scotland, most notably uh, <coughs> leading to the shift in the balance of care away from GPs and hospitals, freeing up vital resources. In 2016-17, optometry services indicated, so optometry, uh, services indicate that it saved the NHS £71 million, with community optometry stopping over 370,000 people from attending hospital for eye issues every year. Additionally, over 80% of acute eye conditions are now managed by optometrists. That's up from 25% prior to the GOS's introduction 12 years ago. Now, while Scottish optometry is leading the world in design and delivery of community eye care, Optometry Scotland state that a concerted focus on forward planning for an increasing older population is needed, along with the Scottish Government supported strategy to encourage people to consider a career into the, uh, the, the optical sector. In Scotland today, uh, the number of registered blind and partially sighted people is around 34,500 people. And every seven minutes, somebody in the UK will be diagnosed with macular disease, which is the biggest cause of blindness in the UK. Now, in conclusion, presenting officer, it's pertinent then that we as MSPs do all that we can to make our constituents aware of the free eye test in Scotland so that the numbers of people benefiting from this policy increases, which should mean preventable sight loss decreases and as many people as possible can live life seeing the full picture. Thank you very much. We move now to the open debate and speeches of around four minutes, please. I call Brian Whittle to be followed by Emma Harper. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presenting Officer, and can I first congratulate Stuart McMillan on securing today's important debate, and I welcome the opportunity to pay tribute to our, our eye health professionals and all the organisations involved with promoting eye health and care. National Eye Health Week gives us an important opportunity to increase the understanding of eye health and educate people on the importance of eye examinations in identifying sight loss and other health conditions. And since uh, April 2006, as has already been said, all people residing in Scotland have been entitled to free NHS eye examinations every two years. The aim of this policy, of course, was to change, it was change was to increase the demand uh, for eye examinations and, as a result, improve the visual health of Scotland's population through an early detection of eye health issues. From looking at the figures from the last financial year, 
Uh, as Stuart McMillan has said, there's nearly 2 million uh, over 16s and nearly 300,000 under 16s received a free eye test, making it the highest annual level on record. And it's clear that that uptake is increasing and that is extremely encouraging. However, I think there's still scope to do more. The number of people, uh, Scottish people with uh, sight loss is still projected to double to almost 400,000 by 2030. And we must therefore continue to encourage and promote the need for greater utilisation of existing eye care services. Eye examinations ensure that people receive early support or treatment from vision impairment whilst also identifying other health conditions such as high blood pressure, arteriosclerosis, tumours and diabetes. Those under 16 or over 60, individuals with glaucoma or those aged over 40 with a close family history of glaucoma, patients with ocular hypertension or with diabetes are entitled to a free examination each year rather than the standard two-year period. And as co-convener of the cross-party group uh, on diabetes, I would particularly like to say that these checks are important for those 290,000 people in Scotland currently living with diabetes, as they are vital in picking up early signs of diabetic retinopathy, a complication of diabetes caused by high blood sugar levels damaging the back of the eye. Diabetic retinopathy is now the single biggest cause of sight loss among working age adults in Scotland and can cause blindness if left undiagnosed and untreated. It's estimated that nearly all people with type 1 diabetes will have diabetic eye disease 20 years after diagnosis and as many as 60% of those with type 2 diabetes will show signs of the condition. A comprehensive eye exam once a year ensures that if diabetic uh, retinopathy is de detected, it can be treated before it reaches an advanced stage and has significantly damaged sight. The importance of these checks can therefore not be emphasised enough. Eye Health Week is also fight, vital in raising awareness of what people can do to reduce their risk of developing a condition which leads to vision impairment. Paying particular attention to type 2 diabetes, which accounts for about 87% of diabetics in Scotland, we must address lifestyle factors such as obesity, physical activity levels, excessive alcohol intake, poor diet and smoking. Research has shown that smoking in particular not only makes you 30 to 40% more likely to develop type 2 diabetes, but also doubles the probability of sight loss. Repeated exposure to tobacco smoke speeds up the body's natural ageing process, including that of the eyes, and increases the risk of developing cataracts and complications linked to diabetes. Worryingly enough, of the 21% of people in Scotland who smoke, 56% are unaware of the link between smoking and eye disease. So I have to commend Ash Scotland for teaming up with the RNIB and Association of Optometrists and NHS Inform Scotland to design a Stop Smoking Advice Card which communicates the implications that smoking can have on sight, and I hope that we can make further progress in informing people of these dangers. According to the RNIB, by 2050, nearly 4 million people in the UK will be living with significant sight loss, despite over 50% of this being avoidable. And it would be remiss of me, of course, uh, not to mention, uh, just to take the opportunity to once again say that, and, and when we're tackling eye health, we are, in fact, uh, talking just about health. And by encouraging an active, healthy, healthy lifestyle, we can impact those, uh, the health of our eyes just as much as we can impact the health of our heart, lungs, or any other organ. So stop, stopping people from losing their sight unnecessarily must be a key priority. And I welcome the platform that this debate gives us in not only educating about the importance of eye health, but also raising the necessary awareness of how to reduce risk of sight-threatening conditions. Deputy Presiding Officer. Call Emma Harper to be followed by Anna Sarwar. Thank you, President Officer. I'm pleased to speak in this afternoon's debate and I'd like to congratulate my colleague Stuart McMillan for securing this this afternoon. Stuart covered the facts and stats really well regarding eye health conditions during this week as it's highlighted as National Eye Health Week. And I agree with what Mr McMillan has explained. I'd like to pick up on the point though related about obtaining an eye exam. I noted the wording in Stuart McMillan's motion, which calls for the public to get their eyes tested on a regular basis by utilising the free eye examination. As a nurse, I've been able to use my experience to help inform me for this debate. And a vision test during a visit to the optometrist isn't just a way to check whether one's eyesight needs help with corrected, uh, corrective prescription. 
The main purpose of getting an eye exam is to detect and diagnose vision problems. However, an eye exam, as has been described, can also help you detect signs or other health issues which may affect other parts of the body. Last year, when I spoke in this Eye Health Week debate, the focus was on diabetes and retinopathy. And according to Diabetes UK, there are around 750,000 people across the UK have, who have undiagnosed diabetes. And following a discussion with an ophthalmic nurse specialist this week, who happens to be my wee sister Buffy, she conveyed that many diagnoses of type 2 are often made at the time that an eye examination is performed, when people describe their symptoms and when retinal photographs are taken. Many people do dismiss their symptoms of gradual visual impairment as grown old or even put it down to tiredness. But the high blood glucose levels associated with the poor controlled type 2 diabetes can mean that the tiny wee blood vessels in the eye, which can be damaged by high levels of blood glucose, can lead to the diabetic eye disease retinopathy. If type 2 diabetes is picked up, diagnosed and treated early, Visual impairment complications can be detected and treated and protection of a person's sight can then be achieved. High blood pressure has been mentioned and it's a disease with far reaching complications, not just for the eyes, but because the blood flow affects every part of the body. But fortunately, high blood pressure is another example of a health condition that may be detected during an eye examination. One disease that hasn't been mentioned is rheumatoid arthritis, and I was actually quite surprised about this. Most people don't know, however, that rheumatoid arthritis can also affect the eyes, as well as the joints, and it's an inflammatory process. But if your rheumatoid arthritis has affected your eyes, then you may have dry eyes, eye pain, and other vision problems. The news is that early treatment can prevent permanent vision damage. Presiding officer, I'd like to thank the Royal Blind for their briefing ahead of this member's debate and highlighting the importance of vision testing, as the Royal Blind have said, seeks to get the message out that most people should have a sight test once every two years and every year for many other identified groups. The symptoms that an eye health care eye professional may detect includes spots in the retina, bleeding in the back of the eye and constricted vessels among others. Again, having one or more of these symptoms doesn't mean that you might have high blood pressure, but it means that you may need further consultation to determine what is causing the symptoms. Presiding officer, one of the other issues is that uh, multiple sclerosis in young people, my sister was telling me, was that young 30-year-old women showed up in her clinic one day with a sudden visual impairment and this led to a diagnosis of multiple sclerosis. So I think it is really important that we raise awareness and remind people to schedule a eye examination, follow your healthcare professionals and doctors advice and recommendations on a suitable follow-up test and treatment. So I echo Stuart McMillan's call for the government to support and promote a refreshed national eye check campaign and that maybe following the eye exam, glasses might not be the only thing required, but other medical issues can be addressed, diagnosed and treated ahead of any complications developing. Thank you. Anna Sarwar to be followed by Rona Mackay. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I start by uh, congratulating Stuart McMillan on securing this important debate and also start by paying tribute to uh, both the RNIB and the Royal Blind, uh, to all their staff, and in particular to all their volunteers for all the amazing work that they do uh, all year round, not just during Eye Health Week, but all year round, not just lobbying parliamentarians, but as Stuart outlined, actually out there on the streets campaigning uh, to help support people and give people better uh, support. Uh, I want to just touch upon something briefly before uh, I speak about the uh, issue of, uh, of eye tests, etc. And that is, I had the great pleasure of speaking at an event a couple of weeks ago in this parliament, um, the Sound of Vision event, which was organised by the RNIB, which was sponsored kindly by um, our own presiding officer. Um, and what that taught me, and, and, and I mean generally taught me, um, was a lot of the challenges that go alongside uh, people who have issues with uh, their sight. And that's not just about access to services, but actually access to employability. People who want to get on and have a normal life, um, how, how that impacts on them, how it impacts on their family, how it impacts on their friends, how it impacts on their uh, relationships, how it impacts on their day-to-day -day interactions, going to the shops, simple things like going to the shop, simple things like going to post a letter in the letterbox, simple things like 
uh, what's on the television or what shows they might go and watch or how they might socialise with their friends. All these issues put into stark reality uh, around some of the fantastic contributions that we had uh, from these people who were either blind or partially sighted, who had got support from the Glasgow Speakers Club uh, to learn about public speaking, to help build their confidence. Uh, and I can honestly say, Deputy Presiding Officer, apart from the speeches we've heard today, there were better speeches than we have most of the time in the Scottish Parliament uh, from these really, really inspiring individuals. And I think there were some future parliamentarians uh, in that group. So I want to congratulate again, in particular, the Presiding Officer for um, allowing them to come and have that session here um, to the RNIB, um, to the funders of that project, and in particular to Stephen Sutherland, who was the driving force uh, behind that project, a very, very inspiring uh, young man, and one I'm sure we may see in this parliament at some point um, in the future. Now, why is this debate so important? We talk about 170,000 people that have significant loss uh, of sight uh, in Scotland. We talk about the impact on their families. Uh, we've rightly had praise of the uh, free eye test policy um, every two years. I'm going to make a confession. I can't remember the last time I went for an eye check, but given that I'm now sitting closer and closer to the television and having to look closer and closer uh, at my notes, I think I'm due an eye test very, very soon. Uh, but how do we have a public information campaign? Something I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to support Stuart McMillan on, and I hope uh, that the Minister can give you a positive uh, response to that as well. It is very welcome that we now have almost a third of people across Scotland take advantage of the free eye checks every two years. But I think we can drive up that figure, particularly in those most vulnerable communities, particularly those people that are more likely to have issues around uh, health inequalities. If we can drive up um, the um, testing rates amongst those individuals, then I think we can spend to save uh, in terms of future uh, issues that address uh, our National Health Service. We've already heard around how we can help uh, pick up on conditions that don't affect the vision yet uh, around uh, blood pressure, around um, refractive errors, around kidney problems, around uh, brain tumours, um, around blood vessels around the eye that can have issues. All of these things uh, that early uh, checking can help to have a support on. So I want to just uh, say again a particular thank you uh, to all the charities uh, involved uh, in this fantastic work. I want to say thank you to Stuart McMillan again for securing this important debate. Uh, I should also say to the chair of the RNIB who spent two days last week um, sitting in this parliament and lobbying parliamentarians. I apologise if we didn't all come instantly to the stand. I hope you got a very positive interaction with all the parliamentarians. And I tru truly believe that this is an issue that we can unite our parliament on and have a significant intervention for generations to come. Thank you. Rona Mackay, followed by Annie Wells. Thank you, presiding officer. I'm delighted to be able to speak in this debate to mark Eye Health Week. And I thank Stuart McMillan for bringing it to the chamber. Eye health affects us all. Most of us at some point in our lives will wear glasses or contact lenses or have laser eye treatment. But what if glasses weren't enough? What if our eyesight started failing so badly that our lives were irrevocably changed? That's why it's so important to go for regular eye tests to detect early if problems are looming. As Stuart McMillan's motion says, great progress has been uh, made with eye health and we're at the highest annual level on record for people receiving eye tests. And it's also so important that in Scotland, eye examinations are free. It's a huge boost to public health. Of course, there are things we can do to preserve our own eye health, such as taking regular screen breaks, reading in the correct light, and most importantly, not smoking. We all know that smoking is harmful to general health, but Ash Scotland tells us there are particular implications for eyesight. Tobacco smoke is composed of thousands of active chemicals, most of them toxic. And as a result, smoking greatly increases the chance of losing sight. As many of, as one in five cases of age-related macular degeneration are caused by smoking, which is also linked to cataract development. Presiding officer, I'm extremely fortunate to have the wonderful organisation Deafblind Scotland in my constituency. And earlier this month, I hosted an event in Parliament to highlight the fantastic and progressive work uh, they're doing. Um, Stuart McMillan was, was present at that, so I think he could back me up here. This wasn't about what they couldn't do, it was about what they could do. From trekking in the Himalayas, climbing Kilimanjaro, playing the taiko drums, and much more. One young man, Ryan, who has Usher syndrome, a condition that affects both hearing and vision, gave an inspirational speech which highlighted how he'd not let this terrible condition hold him back. He was incredible. Presiding officer, early diagnosis and, diagnosis and treatment can prevent up to 98% of severe sight loss. And as in most health conditions, the earlier the treatment, the more likely it is to be effective. National Eye Health Week seeks to get the message across that most people should have a sight test once every two years. 
And of course, we know that a site test can also detect other health conditions such as high blood pressure, diabetes or other serious conditions. There are around 188,000 people living in Scotland today with significant sight loss, and sight loss is projected to double over the next two decades in Scotland to almost 400,000 by 2030. The number of registered blind and partially sighted people in Scotland now stands at around 34,500, but research indicates that as few as 23 to 38% of eligible people are actually registered blind and partially sighted. Presiding officer, civic society and local authorities have a large part to play in helping people with sight loss. In Kirk and Tillich, in my constituency, the local authority introduced a shared space scheme, which has proved to be disastrous for people living with visual impairment or sight loss. They're simply unable to access their own town centre, which raises huge uh, issues of equality. And this is due to the removal of traffic signals, curbs, which their guide dogs recognise, and thundering lorries and buses clogging up this busy junction. It simply isn't safe. So I urge local authorities and developers to think carefully about the effect these streetsca streetscapes can have on the less able. In conclusion, let's all remember that eye health is precious. Go for regular eye tests, free eye tests, and detect problems early. You owe it to yourself and to your family. Thank you. The last of the open debate contributions is from Annie Wales. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. The importance of eye health and the need for regular tests cannot be underestimated. According to leading bodies, sight is the sense that we fear losing most, and for many, simple lifestyle changes can be the key to ensuring long-term eye health. Eye Health Week is about promoting such changes and encouraging everyone to get their eye eyes tested on a regular basis. In doing so, we can reinforce the message that vision really does matter. As many in the Chamber have already done so, I too wish to commend the work that's been done so far in promoting eye health and care. Many of us are risking future sight loss by failing to look after our eyes. Routine eye appointments are recommended every two years, even if your eyesight has always been healthy, so that an optometrist can check that you're seeing clearly and spot any signs for common eye problems. And importantly, poor eyesight can affect anyone at any age. There might be a seven-year-old boy struggling to read the board at school, a 45-year-old not able to see the ball during a Friday night five-a-sides game, or a six- or seven-year-old finding it difficult to carry out daily tasks, like just making a cup of tea. The message Eye Health Week seeks to reinforce is that regardless of circumstance, it's better to get your eyes checked out regularly. And as Stuart McMillan has mentioned, huge progress has been made in terms of numbers, the number of those getting te tested regularly. And as Brian Whittle has stated as well, nearly 2 million over 16s received a free eye test and nearly 300,000 under 16s received a, their free eye test in the last year. And campaigns such as Eye Health Week will no doubt contribute to rising figures and I too would like to commend all the organisations involved. Last year's campaign to raise awareness saw collaboration between Eye Health UK, RNIB and Channel 4 to create a special ad break, giving viewers the chance to watch TV through the eyes of somebody living with sight loss. The Royal Mail also teamed up with Eye Health UK to promote the importance of good eye health by placing a special national Eye Health Week postmark on all stamped mail. Every year, National Eye Health Week teams up with Central Optical Fund to publish Vista, a lifestyle magazine available online designed to raise awareness of how lifestyle choices can affect your eye health. And raising awareness is, of course, about more than promoting regular eye tests. Certain lifestyle choices make poor eye health more likely and thus preventable. Smokers, for example, are four times more likely to suffer from age-related macular degeneration, or AMD, the UK's leading cause of blindness. And despite this, however, over half of smokers in surveys indicate that they're unaware of the link between smoking and sight loss, equating to half a million people in Scotland. Obesity and the links it has with diabetes also doubles your risk of AMD, increasing your chances of developing cataracts, as already been stated. And overexposure to the sun can too increase your chances of cataracts. 
Finally, eye-friendly nutrients can be found in many fruits, vegetables and cold water fish such as sardines and tuna and can protect against AMD. And to be perfectly honest, although I vaguely knew about the links between certain lifestyle choices and eye health, it was only reading about around this topic prior to today's debate that I really came to understand just how strong a link it is. And I am very pleased that I am 11 weeks off the cigarettes now, so that's me cutting my chances even more. It's just losing the weight now, so they, they, they do that, yeah. Um, but for example, I had no idea that eye tests can indicate other health conditions like hypertension and raised cholesterol, which could prevent more serious health problems like heart disease and stroke. If Eye Health Week can improve my knowledge of eye health, and the factors that contribute towards greater risk, it's imperative as politicians we give it further weight and promote awareness. To finish the day, Deputy Presiding Officer, I'd like to thank Stuart McMillan for bringing this debate to the Chamber today, and I think we can all agree how important it, important it is to raise awareness and promote eye health and care. Thank you. I now call on Joe Fitzpatrick to respond to the debate for around seven minutes, please, Minister. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Well, that's it's been a really good debate um, and if I can add my thanks to Stuart McMillan um, for giving us the opportunity to mark Eye Health Week and discuss eye care in Scotland. I know across the chamber we agree that general ophthalmic services is one of the many NHS success stories in Scotland. The introduction in 2006 of free NHS funded eye examinations set Scotland apart from the rest of the United Kingdom. I think it's something that this Parliament has been able to come together to continue supporting in spite of changes to government. Um, that, that's another thing that shows the strength of the policy. So for the first time, um, everyone in Scotland, regardless of their personal situation, had access to an eye examination free of charge. And a routine primary eye examination provides a, a full health check of the, the patient's eye, as well as a normal uh, sight test to help to detect eye disease early and we've a number of members across the chamber um, have, have mentioned particular health um, issues which um, an eye examination can um, identify so I think Rona mentioned Rona Mackay mentioned high blood pressure um, Emma added rheumatoid arthritis which I confess I haven't been aware of either and a number of members including uh, Brian Whittle um, mentioned diabetes. Um, Brian Whittle also mentioned the importance of an active lifestyle as one of the tools and I, think, I don't think we can ever make that point about an active um, lifestyle being important to improve our overall health more often and um, Annie uh, Wells added at the end the importance of a, a healthy diet. Um, so th those are all very very good points. Anna Sarwar, I think, also mentioned a number of other health, but it was such a big list that I, I, I apologise, I wasn't able to, to keep up, but it, it, I think that the point was that eye examinations are, are really important for people's health and not just um, for your eye health. Um, so, uptake of free NHS funded eye examinations has increased by 43% since they were first introduced in 2006 to a position where now I think someone mentioned the number over 2.2 million people had their eyes examined um, in, in 2017, the highest number ever. But um, to pick up on the points raised by Stuart McMillan, Anna Sarwar, Emma Harper and others, we are not complacent. So, as well as continuing to raise awareness amongst the general population through initiatives such as NHS 24's Know Who to Turn To campaign, we plan to run targeted awareness raising campaigns among specific patient groups where take up of free exa eye examinations is lower. So that includes um, those living in more um, disadvantaged communities. The Scottish Government remains uh, committed to ensuring that the best community eye care is accessible to everyone. And that's why we commissioned a review of community eye care services in Scotland in 2016, 10 years after the free charges, the free eye tests were introduced. Um, before I talk about the review, I thought it's probably useful to uh, take the opportunity to mention the current eye care services provided in the community. The optometrists in Scotland um, is the first port of call for any eye problem. It, it can be really frightening um, when something happens to your vision, but this support in the community, close to where you live, um, provides the high quality of care that people need. Emergency eye prescriptions can often be managed and treated in the community. 
And evidence shows that more patients now go to, directly to the optimi optometrist if they have a problem, uh, rather than, first of all, going to their eye, to their GP, and then being referred um, on. So um, clearly, community optometrists optometrists have increasingly been taking on this extended role for some time now, demonstrating the growing capacity um, and capability and um, competency of the profession. They are um, doing more work in the community, reducing the burden on secondary care and GPs and ensuring patients remain in a primary care setting. The service um, is enhanced by those optometrists who have undergone training to independently prescribe medicines. That's something that's facilitated by NHS Education in Scotland and over 250 community optometrists have become fully trained independent prescribers. That is, amounts to one third of the total number of such fully trained prescribers across the whole of the UK. But we think there's more that can be done there. This is a, a service which we think should be growing. Um, optometrists and ophthalmologists are also working together when patients need referral to secondary care. So the Eye Care Integration is a programme that's underway, which, amongst other things, seeks to increase the number of optometrists send the patient referral to secondary care electronically. So not only much quicker, but it means that um, we can also attach pictures and scans of the patient's eyes, allowing the ophthalmologist to assess the, and triage the referral with um, an appropriate appointment. Um, so that's really good progress that's been made there and we we'll continue to work with health boards to reach a position in the near future where all refer referrals are submitted electronically. We're also in the early stages of commissioning our Once for Scotland ophthalmology electronic patient record. Um, this will be a real game changer for the delivery of eye care services in Scotland. It will mean ophthalmologists can provide meaningful feedback to optometrists, um, reducing the number of unnecessary referrals to secondary care. I mentioned earlier the government um, announced a review of community eye care services in 2016. SCOVI, the Scottish Council on Visual Impairment and Optometry Scotland um, representatives were both members of the review group and patients were involved to ensure that their views were captured as well. The review, review published its report in April 2017 and highlighted the success of the services as well as identifying areas for improvement. Since then, the government has been working um, with a range of stakeholders, including Optometry Scotland and NHS boards, to deliver on the report's recommendation. Um, amongst other things, um, as a result of the work, a number of significant and positive changes will be made uh, to general ophthalmic services from the 1st of October. Amongst other things, these changes include further supporting the community um, optometry as the first port of call uh, for all eye, eye health problems in Scotland, uh, revised um, arrangements for tests and procedures. Um, all general ophthalmic services practitioners will be required to complete mandatory annual training provided by NH NHS Education Scotland, further upskilling the optometry profession and providing a baseline standard um, of education and care and I think to pick up the point uh, made by Emma Harper patients who are sight impaired um, or, or severely sight impaired will for the first time be entitled to an annual primary eye examination rather than just every two two years as at present. Presiding officer I think this has been a, a really good debate I'm really pleased to have been able to be involved in it and I'm sure the chamber will continue to support Eye Health Week in the years to come. Thank you. That concludes the debate and this meeting is closed.